Hello, everybody, and welcome to In the Dawn World. I'm so excited that you joined us today. I have such an amazing guest. You know, one thing about In the Dawn World is I get to fangirl all the time, and this is no exception. Um, today, our guest is Noel Cruz. He is a uh, versatile and distinguished repaint artist. And I know you probably know him from his, he's really most recognized for his uh, celebrity character-based dolls. Um, but his repainting is phenomenal. And I just want to welcome Noel to the uh, to In the Doll World and say thank you so much for joining us. I'm so excited to have you here with us today. Thank you, Georgia. I'm most honored. Thank you for this opportunity to be able to share my work, my, my work on my dolls with your viewers. And uh, this is really a, a special moment for me, uh, especially when I spend most of my time just holed up in my office <laughs> doing doing what I do. I don't get a lot of chance to really connect with um, with other people. So thank you so much for this. Well, thank you for thank you for letting us be, you know, one of those people that you want to uh, be able to share your amazing work with. So we're going to definitely talk about your work, but I just want to um, ask you a little bit more about yourself and um, how you got started in doing this uh, repainting. And, you know, how did your doll journey start? Well, this all started back in 2001, right as I was coming out of uh, college and just got my bachelor's degree. And I, and I thought, and I really was very confident I was gonna go into video editing because that's uh, actually what I went to school for. Oh wow, I did and, not uh, know that. <laughs> yes, I went to school for, uh, my major was communications mm -hmm. and I was doing quite a bit of video editing. And I, in fact, I worked with a professor there and we shot a documentary in Africa about black slavery. And I was, we were mm. going to go back and do uh, more uh, production work on that. But then that summer break during the summer, I uh, happened to just browse on eBay uh, for, <laughs> uh -oh. for dollars because you shouldn't do that. Because my, my <laughs> wife, was, I, I, yeah, I get in trouble a lot of times for doing that. <laughs> But my wife, she's been a collector. At, at that point, she was already, she's been collecting dolls for close to 15 years. Wow. So, yeah, so she's quite, had quite a bit of collection. And I was just going to uh, look for a doll to uh, to uh, surprise her with. Then I just accidentally stumbled upon this doll that was, you know, one of the dolls that she collected. But... Uh, it, I, I quickly realized that this doll, the reason was it looked very different from from the dolls that my wife collected mm -hmm. was because this doll had been intricately repainted. In other oh. words, it had been fully customized to look like, and this wasn't even like a, a doll of a particular celebrity, but what really struck me, what really took my breath away about this doll was that it was painted in a very lifelike fashion mm -hmm. that is very uncommon for um faces painted regularly and they would look very caricaturish right but this one looked almost almost like a, a life like like a, like an actual person mm. with all the shading with all the details and it dawned on me that the doll could actually be used as sort of like a 3d canvas to paint a portrait right and, and paint it realistically and, and, and that got me so fascinated that I, at that point I told myself, I have to give this a try. And this, the reason I, I felt so passionate about this was all my life I've been doing portraits at a, such a young age. Mm -hmm. I started learning how to do portraits and, and, and anything that had to do with capturing the features of the human face really appealed to me even as a child of 12 years old. Wow. So, so at this point in my life, I've been doing, I've already done a lot of portraits. I've done portraits for friends and family, mostly just gifts. And, and if I ever sold maybe just a couple of, uh, of portraits, but really not as a, not for a living, right. Mostly just as a hob hobby, but, uh, but I've been familiar with, with portraits and how to do them. And so the idea of being able to use a doll as sort of like a canvas and a, a different, a very unique kind of canvas really struck me. And so right away, I uh, took one of my wife's dolls. Uh, <laughs> at first, I was uh, sort of, you know, 
going back and forth whether I should touch the doll's <laughs> face and, and, and sort of may, maybe potentially ruin it in the process. But, I, I, you know, my confidence was stronger than my fear of, of ruining this doll. And so I, I told myself I just had to go for it. And, and I did, and um, I, I tried to muster all the skills I, I knew as a portrait artist mm -hmm. to try to work my, my, uh, my skills on this little piece of uh, canvas and quickly realized that I didn't have the skills to, <laughs> to, to work, to, to portray, to project that, those uh, skills or, or the features right. to a, a brand new kind of canvas for me. Mm -hmm. And, and I thought it was going to be easy. And so, you know, I was sort of uh, disappointed at first and frustrated, but I just kept on going back and forth, going back and forth, a lot of trial and error. And um, my first attempt to sell it on eBay didn't really fetch any bidders. <laughs> and and I was uh, I, I was brokenhearted about that. <laughs> I thought it was going to be easy for me having more than 20 years of uh, of drawing skills. Right. But, but then I... I quickly convinced myself that I had to relearn this because this is a, a, a new medium for me mm -hmm. using a doll. And, and so I, I, I spent another few weeks just sort of practicing and just sort of studying this, uh, the photographs of this doll that I saw on eBay. And, and, um, and at some point I felt like I was satisfied and I told myself, okay, I, I think this is, you know, I'm pretty confident enough that, that this um, would be a, something that would fetch some bids on eBay, and so I did that. <laughs> and the auction went for like uh, five days on eBay, and I at that entire time uh, I was very, I was just anxiety ridden because the first couple of days nobody placed any bids, <laughs> but once once uh, it started getting a bid, then then uh, closer to the final hours of the doll, right. Uh, you know, a couple of other bidders came in, and and the doll finally sold for at that point was what I seen was a whopping amount of one hundred sixty two dollars. <laughs> that was still pretty good, though, for your first. Yes. Time. that was still pretty good, I must say. And 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 that at that point, what mattered to me was just the fact that it sort of validated my skills. That right. Someone was actually willing to, actually, someone appreciated my work on that doll enough to you know, pay that amount of money, which was $162. I mean, $162 for a dollar is still not, uh, you know, just loose change. Right, right. You know, but it, it, it was a fantastic start. It was mm -hmm. a fantastic start for me. Mm -hmm. And it, it just got me, you know, inspired even more. I, yeah. you know, I, was, I got even more ferocious with my desire to just continue with this. Mm -hmm. um, portrait. Uh, drawing is actually my, my first passion more than anything else. When I went to college, I did that video editing thing. I love that too. But my heart, heart still went back to um, portraits mm -hmm. and drawing, but I just couldn't make any money out of it. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure you're familiar with uh, that. Yes. Familiar with the, <laughs> the term, uh, the, the starving artist. Yes. And, and, and that was me you know up until that point and so that that point right there was like a, a pivotal point for me because it, it sort of i entered that space where i'm finally able to sell my art for something and right. not just twenty dollars or thirty dollars mm -hmm. or, or just give them away for free and it just motivated and inspired me even more so that's how it all began and, and from then on from that summer of 2001 um, I never stopped, and, and, and we're now 21 years after uh, after that first uh, moment when I offered my doll on eBay. <laughs> yeah, and then the first uh, in, in in 20 there's 21 years from the last time you you uh, took one of your wife's dolls and did it over. Was she yeah. upset about that? <laughs> no, she was That's actually cool. flabbergasted. I cannot ever forget her excitement she was just as excited as i was oh that's so and, cool and uh, because she knew exactly my 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 sentiments about art and the, she knew my journey in life and uh, she was really cheering on and rallying for me and i was happy about that even my son was excited for me and ebay being a, a new uh new newish um, 
technology back in the day, mm -hmm. this was like, wow. I was like, somebody's out there. I could not mm -hmm. see who, who bought this doll. I don't know who this person is or what he or she looked like. But right. Wow, somebody out there likes my work and, and that just gives me some sense of incredible thrill that I, I could never describe. Yeah, it just gives you probably more validation, you know, like you said, of somebody out there really appreciates the work that you that you did. So um, when did you, so you said you were doing portraits since you were like a little kid um, mm -hmm. and you decided to try your hand after you saw this repainting done on this doll. What was the first um, celebrity doll that you decided to do? The very first celebrity doll I did, I remembered, was Elizabeth Taylor. And, and, and I used the same doll that I used for the very first doll that I, that I sold on eBay. And this doll is actually the, the doll by uh, Mel Odom, mm -hmm. uh, which was no called, uh, yeah, the Jean doll uh, produced by Ashton Drake Galleries. And I thought that the doll had very flexible and very adaptable features okay. that you can actually project a lot of different kinds of uh, celebrities if you just pick them out carefully. And so I did Elizabeth Taylor. To me, in my opinion, one of the most beautiful faces in Hollywood. Uh, particularly old Hollywood. There was just something about her face, her eyes, her features that I thought were um, so perfect. And uh, mm -hmm. to me, it was almost like a no-brainer to, <laughs> to take Elizabeth Taylor as my first repainted doll. Okay. Uh, followed, by, uh, followed by, I remember, uh, Jane Seymour, uh, mm. particularly from the movie Somewhere in Time, just because I really loved that movie. It was just like this movie about time travel and mm -hmm. she had this very elegant, very wiggle look, her character. And um, I also used uh, Jean Doll for that. <laughs> I, I pretty much was using almost exclusively just Jean okay. when, whenever, I, whenever I first started repainting. Mm -hmm. So a lot, a lot of my celebrities back in those days, especially when there weren't a lot of celebrities yet that had dolls, that had actual dolls sculpted specifically uh, after their features, uh, it made sense to me to use the most popular uh, fashion doll at that moment, with right. the Lexus, which was well apart from Bar, apart from Barbie, mm -hmm. which was the uh, the Jean doll, okay. and a lot of uh, other repainters who uh, followed af afterwards also used the Jean doll. So it, it became very popular within uh, repainters. But uh, I quickly I quickly realized that I I wanted to. Um, specifically focus on or at least mostly celebrity repaints okay and why was that there was, that? Just, was, there that? was just something about capturing an actual person's face i also enjoyed uh, drawing just from out of my head you know people or, or beautiful faces mm -hmm. there was some, something with some sense of satisfaction to be able to capture an actual person's likeness because mm -hmm. a lot of artists know, and I'm sure they would agree, that it, it's not an easy task to actually capture an actual likeness whenever you're doing portraits. Right. It's, easy to, it's e much easier to draw a beautiful face or just uh, a, a non-existent or just, a, you know, a person, that an, an imagined person. Oh, okay. But somebody that, like on a specific person where mm -hmm. you have to be more faithful and really exacting with, with the features so that it looks like the, the actual person you're portraying. For me, it presents more challenge. And I, I really relish that challenge of being mm -hmm. able to do that. And I, I've been a big fan of uh, a lot of Hollywood stars all my life. Mm -hmm. So that sort of really appealed to me. And then and sort of where I uh, really, you know, made that decision to concentrate on, on recreating mostly uh, celebrity dolls. Okay, all right. So when you started painting them, when you started to, to change the, the so you already had, say you had a doll, a Mel, a Mel Odom doll, and you wanted to make them look like somebody else, right? Uh, what type of materials do you use for that? I mean, because I, I don't, I guess for me, I can't see that you just take off the paint and just re redo that doll. I would think you'd have to, change it in some way because it doesn't necessarily you know i mean that person doesn't look like that gene doll so how does that what kind of materials do you do do you use for that and and did it take you a long time to find what materials work best for you surprisingly um 
all I used was just acrylic paints and brushes. Oh, wow. If, if you've ever, um, yes, the whole idea when, when you're painting a specific celebrity using uh, a generic, uh, mm -hmm. you know, for lack of a, be of a better word. Right. For when you're using a generic or, or non a specific right. doll state, it's not meant to be a, a, a doll of a specific person. It's just to use that doll to sort of channel, channel the features of mm. that person that you're recreating. So, so naturally, you're not you're not um, trying to you're not able to replicate the exact shape of the nose right. or the lips. But you come as close by pushing the boundaries by using a method called um, contouring, which uh, a lot of makeup artists um, are very familiar, especially uh, makeup artists of Hollywood stars right. would use this technique wherein they, they make a certain celebrity look like another celebrity. Or, or um, uh, there's this uh, brilliant artist called Kevin O'Quan. I'm not sure if, I if I'm pronouncing his last name right. But he uh, did a lot of work with so many different celebrities where he would like work on a specific celebrity, for instance, Winona Ryder, mm -hmm. and transform Winona Ryder and make her look like she, and she has the very essence of Elizabeth Taylor from the movie Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. Oh. So... The the whole idea is just to take that celebrity's features and, and sort of like personality and project that onto the doll's face mm -hmm. so that whenever you look at the doll's face, you sort of quickly recognize the features as being mm -hmm. that of a specific celebrity. Okay. So, so then in other words, you can change certain things like, um, especially from the front view where you can change the shape of the lips or the eyes are not really three-dimensionally uh, shaped like they don't the sculpted features on a gene doll don't stick out so that you could actually uh, create your own shape of, okay. of the eyes mm -hmm. when painting mm -hmm. the eyes okay. and or painting the eyebrows so so it gives you a lot of room for and you could actually manipulate mm -hmm. the, the features with with with, with painting right and that you could you know sort of "Quote unquote," reshape the mm -hmm. doll's features, gotcha. and that's essentially what uh, I did as a as a repainter to uh, sort of use that doll, the Jean doll. And uh, a lot of uh, collectors quickly uh, caught on with that, and and, <laughs> and they appreciate that that I was able to actually. And that's the thing with the Jean doll is uh, a lot of my customers is just uh, really amazed or or. or surprised by how I could transform it into a completely mm -hmm. different look. And and so um so that sort of uh really gave me that that inspiration to mm -hmm. to keep on working with the Jin doll. And just the the fact that I was able to make different sort of like you could almost <laughs> could not recognize it as a Jean doll anymore. And and that's the satisfaction I got from creating one repaint to another to right. another. Right. Is they look completely different from each other, mm -hmm. but in reality, it's all just the same uh, doll skull, right. which was the Jean doll. That's why and, I was asking, because I thought, you know, I thought maybe you'd have to cover up certain things, you know, with some kind of material to re and redesign it from there. So I'm, I'm just... I'm just totally fascinated that you don't do that. You know that you didn't have to do that. That you just use paint to, con like you said, to use to those contour secrets. I guess to, you know, to highlight a different uh, face structure. It was that's a that's fascinating to me. So and, and to me, it's sort of just <laughs> I don't know. It's uh, you know I'm kind of like surprised myself that I could do it. <laughs> <laughs> and and it just for an artist to be able to to mm -hmm. to just use. So one piece of canvas and to create different looks for me it's it, it was very exciting it was very thrilling when i especially when i was just start starting out because this was nothing or this was wasn't anything that I, that i've ever been like I, I i was ever familiar with right as an artist and so to just be able to really explore this and, and mm -hmm. explore it exhaustingly just by creating <laughs> different looks Mm -hmm. And showing people and how uh, yes. I'm able to get uh, such such inspiring feedback from people just sort of kept me driving forward uh, even further. Just to me, it, it, it was just something 
thrilling to do as an artist because it was something fresh and it was, it was something new. And at the same time, it was something, so it was a combination of, of, of my passion for art and my passion for celebrities uh, combined into one, uh, one, one format or one, uh, one piece of uh, thing that you could actually share out there with uh, uh, people who, who like to collect dolls and things like that. I am just like, you know, me and the millions of other people are fascinated with, you know, the, the way that you can transform a doll, you know, even if it's already a doll that looks like the celebrity and how you can take that and, and actually make it look even more realistic, you know. So um, I, I know you don't just do celebrities. I know you did a doll that was really, really close to your heart. So um, I, I want to be, I want you to share that the doll that you did about your mom, because I think that's just a beautiful story. Yes. And um and the fact that she looks so much like her picture is just a testament to the amazing work that you do, you know? I would like to uh, share my most special doll here, my mm -hmm. most special work. Uh, she holds, uh, this doll holds a lot of meaning for me because this is a doll that I made after my mom. Mm -hmm. So first off, uh, this uh, is a jean doll created to look like my mom. Uh, Jean Dahl is, again, by mm -hmm. the brilliant Mel Odom, and she's like 15 inch tall. So whenever I first started repainting, I already thought about doing a tribute doll of my mom. For me, it was very important that I um, honored my mom mm -hmm. and pray, paid tribute to her using my skills as an artist. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I thought, what better way to do that than by using a doll and and employing um you know my newfound skills as a repaint artist and sort of use that and and my mm -hmm. skills to be able to pay tribute to uh, mm -hmm. the most uh, dear the dearest person in my life which is my mom uh and and on many levels uh, this is very important to me because uh first of all my mom was a very posing figure in my life she's inspired me on so many levels. In fact, she was the very per first person who actually encouraged me with my artwork. And uh, she would always uh, promote my work with my drawings mm -hmm. with, to her friends and relatives. And so for me to be able to do this is a very natural thing. It, it, you know, there's no question I had to do it. Mm -hmm. So uh, when I had the chance to do it using a jean doll, <laughs> And uh, this particular look of my mom is based from one of her photographs wearing the same exact hairstyle. And by the way, uh, my work as a repaint artist does not only entail working on the face or doing repaint. It also entails actually, uh, especially when you're working uh, to uh, recreate a particular person that you have to be specific also to that uh, person's hairstyle. Mm -hmm. Because I think the hair, as well as the, the face, like both uh, are significant or are, are vital elements in contributing to that entire right. uh, look and, and capturing that uh, level of authenticity of that person's likeness. Mm -hmm. And so I thought I'd, you know, recreate my mom's hairstyle and, uh, and my mom's face from that um, particular shot, from that particular studio shot of her picture. And um, she's... Um, here with me whenever I draw. She's in this very room all the time. So she's staring at me, watching <laughs> me work, <laughs> keeping me company. And I, and it's it might might sound silly, but um I feel like no. her spirit is here with me mm -hmm. whenever I do my work. I can just um, you know, take a break and look at the doll and mm -hmm. see my mom. Yeah. And uh, and feel her presence so to speak. And um and I'm I'm grateful for that. So um, this doll will I always hold a special meaning in my heart. I actually uh, brought her back to the Philippines in my last during my last trip in 2019 and oh, showed so her cool. around. Yeah, so she's been to different doll functions, doll shows, and doll gatherings, and everybody was just very you know happy. And, mm -hmm. and, really thrilled to see because I've seen her in pictures. Yeah. Uh, my brothers who are all back in the Philippines were, were, were very thrilled to see her for the first time as well. Oh, so, that must have been so sweet. That was a special though. moment for me.
And also one thing that I just want to add about this Dolls book, when she was still alive, she and after she married, she never really, we were struggling economically. We, uh, we had so, so much uh, hard economic times. She never got really to do uh, much of the things that she wanted to do, um, like travel, even wear nice clothes, because uh, whatever little income we had went to our education, went to our food. Mm -hmm. And so this doll allowed me to sort of take her to places. So whenever we, I traveled, I took her to Hawaii. Aww. I took her to our road trip in Colorado. I, I, I took her to, to uh, when we went to Graceland to visit Elvis, uh, <laughs> Elvis Presley's home. And so I felt as if almost uh, vicariously through this doll, I, 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 you know, it, it gave me a sense of satisfaction to sort of, I could imagine that, that she had somehow been able to experience all those things. Yeah. Be able to do those things that she never had quite the chance to do because we were so poor back right. in the day. And I, I keep up with dressing her, redressing <laughs> her in different fashions that she probably would have. <laughs> bought or purchased if she had the money right but she didn't so uh, just doing those things uh you know with this doll just gives me a lot of satisfaction and and for me uh, as as uh, as a child as her child i just it just it was so important for me to do that yeah like if i couldn't do that to her like in person in real mm -hmm. life at least I could do it to a dollar of her that I, right. I paid tribute to her. And right. it would almost mean exactly like the same thing, yeah. like the same gesture as if she were around. And, and so it, I was mostly doing it for me to <laughs> so, so yes, to that's usually what happens. make me feel as if, as if I've finally been able to provide for her, or provided her with some soup some comfort in life, uh, some luxury, some comforts. Right. And I know I couldn't do that without with her not being around anymore. So I I use I do it with her yeah, doll. With your doll. That's so oh my gosh. Okay. I almost wanted to yes. cry. I almost wanted to cry <laughs> for a minute. You know, my mom <laughs> I'm, you know, my mom just passed away, you know, last year. And so we were always really oh, close and so sorry so, to hear that. Thank you. When you said how you just travel with her and and take her places that she had never seen, I think for me that really touched me because I I think a lot of times as children, you know, you want to be able to take care of your parents, you know, you want to be able to, Absolutely. to, 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 to have the money to do those things for them because, you know, they, they took care of you and they struggled and made sure that your life was better. And when they're not here, those are the things that you want to do for them. So I think you are blessing her spirit, you know, uh, by doing that, you know, I, I think that is just a, a beautiful way to honor her. And uh, you do it so well, you know, the fact that you created, you know, how she looks, or how she, you buy a clothes that you believe that she would have bought, you know what I mean? And take her places because I think it just keeps that connection that you have with her. And she's like your muse, you know, and that's, that's, that's who she is to you. So I want, I do want to thank you for doing that because it's, oh, it's so beautiful, so beautiful. Yeah. I mean, and, let me, and let me just uh, make a little shout out to Mel Odom. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Mel, for <laughs> choosing an era, creating a doll, choosing an era in which uh, my mom lived in that particular era, the 30s, the 40s, the 50s. Mm -hmm. And with all the fashions, this is actually another um, um, fashion created by Ashton Drake for, for Jean Doll, mm -hmm. which just complements uh, my mom, the, the doll of my mom perfectly because she lived, you know, mm -hmm. she was young. She was right. a young woman. In, that era and without doubt i probably would have spent a fortune uh, commissioning clothes <laughs> <laughs> yes mel would have created so many beautiful fashions that yes and had the design for no, but we will make line, sure so. we, we will make sure he gets your shout out that's for sure. <laughs> yes that's yes. for sure. Well, thank you for sharing that because she is a beautiful doll. And, and when I saw her picture and I see the doll, I just, I see her. There's just no, you know, she looks yes. so much, so much like her that it's just, it's oh. phenomenal the work that you do. So beautiful. Okay, mom, I'm going to, we're going to set you aside <laughs> for a bit. Yes. <laughs> Talk about some more of your other dolls. That, that'd be wonderful. So okay. when you, when you were talking about, um, 
you recreating these dolls and repainting them dolls and you were saying that you don't it's not just the face for you right it has to like you said you, you create the clothes and as well as the hair and the hair is something that's really really important to you um when i look back on the dolls of course you know the the doll that has the <laughs> the most iconic hair <laughs> the one that you create re recreated and so talk about that doll you know the the farrah Fawcett doll because i think i think you're right in the sense that without that hair it's not a Farrah Fawcett doll. How intricate and how important Precisely. is to that doll, to any doll? Yeah, well, first of all, Farrah Fawcett, she's a celebrity. She's an actual real person. She right. was a, a, a huge star back in the 70s. Uh, she rose to fame from the TV show Charlie's Angels. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, I think even up to this point, she holds the, the title for the largest best-selling poster Mm -hmm. of all time yes. red swimsuit poster yes. <laughs> uh, back in the day it was just phenomenally insane how every young man mm -hmm. on the, or uh, every man on the planet had the, the poster on their bedroom walls at, at that time she was that iconic and also um, you know i was a big fan of of her just because uh you know, I thought she was a phenomenal performer from that show. And, uh, you know, also her looks were so iconic. I mean, first of all, yeah, if you're going to replicate a celebrity, it, that would be a challenge in and of itself. But to replicate a celebrity for which she became an icon, not only for her face, but for her hair. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's even doubly challenging. Right. So, so for me to just paint her face, it's not going to be enough. It, it just isn't going to do the job. It's not, it's not going to cut it. Right. So, um, and Mattel came out with the, the, the production version of this shortly after Farrah Fawcett died. Mm -hmm. The sculpt was really remarkably the, the, the sculpt um, that uh, captured uh, perfectly Farrah Fawcett's features. But in my opinion, the hair was, or even the facial painting was totally far from it. So, um, and I guess that's, uh, sort of where I come in as a repaint artist. And, and, and my job is not, not just to repaint, but to repaint it in such a way that it captures the likeness. And not even just capture the likeness, but capture it in a lifelike way. I mean, you could probably do a caricature of Farrah and it would still, you could still recognize that as Farrah Fawcett. Right. But my, my work and, and my style of, of doing portraits, even as a young child, has always been the lifelike, the photographic, like, for instance, whenever I was doing black and white portraits, I would imagine that these por black and white portraits were like black and white photographs. Mm -hmm. that, that level of realism and shading, where you could actually look at a, a picture and think that it was a black and white photograph. So right. I aspired to that, to that kind of aesthetic and style. And so whenever I, I began working on dolls, I sort of projected that same level of aesthetic with my doll. So so in other words, if I took a, a, a photographs of this doll, I you know, my intention would be to make your doll look like it was a, an actual black and white, I mean, a, an actual photograph mm -hmm. of that person. Right. So, uh, you know, I tried, uh, you know, th that, that was a sort of uh, level of detail I was trying to achieve. So in the sphere of faucet, uh, the first order of business was to paint her face. But let me tell you one other very challenging aspect about doing a Farrah Fawcett repaint, especially a smiling one with her teeth all showing, is to paint every single one of those teeth in the same exact shape of every one of Farrah Fawcett's uh, tooth. Wow. So, yeah, so the shape, the the uh, the, the the scale of the teeth have, have to be precise and exact, uh, and even not not just showing the upper teeth, but part of her lower teeth. Okay. So uh, that was the challenge, and uh, you can ask anybody who paints portraits if they have to do the teeth. That would be such a pain in the, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> it, yeah, it would be it's such hard work. So, so to do that, you know, to uh, reference an actual person is even more challenging. Mm -hmm. So that that was the first uh, that was challenge number one right there was the, the teeth, <laughs> and then the second challenge was how do you 
create such an iconic hairstyle on right. that doll. Uh, the, the thing I, I learned from all my years of repainting was uh, I actually had also many years practicing with cutting hair and layering hair and looking at different uh, <laughs> Uh, hairstyle magazines, you know, back in the days, they, we, I don't know if they're still selling actual magazines right now, but I would just go to bookstores Oops. and look at uh, magazines of hairstyles and, and use that as a reference point and mm -hmm. take as many inspiration as I can get from photographs. And so I got a lot of practice doing that. Okay. So at this time, at that point when I was ready to create this doll, I already, I already had developed some skills with uh, hairstyling <laughs> on a doll. So I wasn't, I wasn't new to uh, hairstyling anymore. So okay. I guess that helped me largely. Yes. And I knew that the ha hairstyle had to be layered and feathered like Farrah Fawcett's hair. And, uh, you know, it, it just, uh, <laughs> it just really, um, it gives me the kick whenever people would ask, how in the world have, were you able to take that hairstyle and make it look exactly like Farrah Fawcett's hair? How do you, where do you even begin? Where do you right. even start? So, like, so many questions. Uh, what do I do? I, uh, how, how many different sort of lengths of hair do, 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 do I have to make have to for put this in there. particular mm -hmm. hair? Yes, so it's like people are, are, are at a loss for, for, for <laughs> even to begin. And, and, and sometimes uh, when people ask me, how do you even do it? My answer would be just, I, I guess you have to ask my hands. My hands just, <laughs> it's like my hands have a, have a brain, have a mind of its own. It's almost like impossible to describe it. Right. It's, right. it's almost like whenever I get on, on that role of actually creating the hairstyle. Mm-hmm. Whenever I get into that momentum, I don't even think about it. It's like, um, and it sounds almost like arrogant when I say that, but honestly, I just don't even think. Like instinctively, I know I know which area to cut. I know uh, which part of the hair the hair has to be short or shorter or longer. Okay. And and which part to curl this way or curl that way to you know flip in or flip out and sort of like create create the volume on the crown of the head. So, yeah, it's just uh, wow, and the scale to make it nice. scale uh, in such a way that when you photograph it, it looks almost like a human scale. Dolls hair, they, they tend to be really big and really out there. And um, so just being able to scale it down and making it relax, because that's the other problem with, with dolls hair sometimes is they tend to jump out mm -hmm. and it's almost impossible to make the dolls hair relaxed and just look normal. So um, the, the hairstyle is is just something that I spend hours and hours and hours. I don't even like really uh, budget my hours. <laughs> so I, I, I don't know, I just enjoy working on, on And I have a friend who I think has the biggest collection of Farrah Fawcett repaints. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, he pretty much his entire co collection of repaints and I would say like ninety percent of this repaint collection are are my are my repaints and, and right. are are ninety percent fair faucet repaints. Wow. Wow. So I've done different incarnations of fair right. faucet, different hairstyles mm -hmm. throughout the years she uh, you know after she uh, stopped doing this kind of hairstyle she uh, right. sport different other looks. Mm -hmm. And so, the, uh, you know, my friend uh, commissioned me to do all these different looks. So, so oh, yes, cool. I, I, I think I've probably replicated at least 20 different kinds of Farrah Fawcett hair, hairstyles mm -hmm. uh, throughout the years. Right, uh, right. Throughout her years of, of being a celebrity, uh, sporting wow. different um, hairstyles. Nice so, style. Okay. Yeah, but um, I always go back to this as my most favorite, like just because it's so <laughs> iconic. Yeah, yeah, definitely <laughs> so iconic. Isn't it so funny? Because you were just talking about the proportions of, if you know, of of creating hair so that it looks proportionate to a doll and not just, or it looks like a human on a doll. You know, it's I kind of think that's interesting. What um, what sections of the doll? that you find the most challenging when you have to recreate? Besides the hair, like, is it is it the eyes? You know, like you said, is it the mouth? Is it the nose? Like, what, what, what portion of the doll is most challenging for you? 
to create? For me, it's personally for me, it's it's always been the teeth. Whenever I I see a, a new a brand new celebrity face call and and it's a, it's a non smiling face call, <laughs> I always say, oh, thank God, thank <laughs> God. <laughs> Because whenever you're dealing with with a celebrity scum that has a full smile, you always, always automatically, mm-hmm. and 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 most definitely have to spend twice as much time working mm-hmm. on that repaint. Okay. Just because painting the teeth is just so time consuming. It's just and it's not just painting the the teeth and making the teeth the shape of each one of those tools exact. It's also shading the every right. single one. Of them. Yeah, yeah, wow. Because what pe- what uh, people don't realize is it might look all white to you, but there's actually very subtle shading that's going on there. Okay. So yeah, it's not just painting the divisions between the mm-hmm. uh, between the teeth, but also shading every single one of them. Wow. Yeah, uh, I I can't um. I can't overestimate the challenge, <laughs> <laughs> or over or uh, or overstate when right. I say that how it's much been challenged, right, how, right. Challenged. how long it takes to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so that's uh, that's one thing, and also um, if I may add, if if a celebrity doll or or, or any doll for that matter, uh, whether it be a doll of a celebrity or not. If they have like features that are molded, those usually are challenged. There are certain uh, dolls from other doll companies that would actually sculpt the uh, eyelids. Oh. Okay. Where, whereas in the in the case of whereas in the case of Mattel, usually the dolls don't have sculpted eyelids, mm-hmm. so that when you erase when you erase the eyes, it's just basically a flat surface right okay. there, there are not any areas that are molded that are sticking out or, or shutting out okay and so it's easier to just be more flexible or just uh work your magic mm-hmm. and, and not be constrained by by any uh sculpted area so you can okay. basically just paint any any shape of eye any mm-hmm. diff- different eye shapes right it's much easier to do that because you don't have to deal with any ridges mm-hmm. uh, things like that mm-hmm. so that that's also one challenge when whenever you because you, you try to push the boundaries when you're doing um um celebrities mm-hmm. you try to make make it as close as possible to right. the person you replicate okay yes. so um so those things yeah so what other what other celebrities you have there that we could that you could share with us okay and here's another one from the classic era one of my favorites oh yes look at that we have here uh the iconic audrey hepburn mm-hmm. and this is uh, her look from uh, the film uh, My Fair Lady, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. where Beautiful. she played uh, Eliza Doolittle. Yeah, uh, with this one, this is also by Mattel, mm-hmm. and uh, the doll was molded, uh, sculpted to look just like Audrey Hepburn. Mm-hmm. So the challenge was just to make it more photographic, more realistic. Oh, okay, all right. And and the hairstyle and the hair hairstyle has uh, also been restyled. Okay. So now the challenge the challenge with this particular repaint was the the very tiny um, sideburns. Oh, okay. All right, right. Okay. I see them there. So mm-hmm. if you look at the sideburns, mm-hmm. and especially when do, do doing our uh, hair pieces that small it is so hard to make them relax so that's the challenge when when doing a celebrity with, with delicate hairstyles like right. that you have to be mindful of the scale of the things like the bangs and the sideburns mm-hmm. and of course of course on top of that the uh, the likeness has to be there she's been yeah she's been uh, very popular with collectors as okay. well done a couple of versions and Mattel actually did also another version from the movie uh, Breakfast at Tiffany's. Mm-hmm. Okay. Actually, uh, from the one of uh, the celebrities that got me into really doing portraits. 
And this one was from the show The Bionic Woman mm -hmm. back mm -hmm. in the 70s. So yeah. this is actually, uh, the doll that I used for this is actually a Robert Tanner doll. Okay. Uh, particularly, uh, this doll was actually uh, a doll from the movie Warm Body. So Tanner produced uh, one of the characters from that movie, Warm Bodies. And I thought this, the, the features were close enough for me to replicate mm -hmm. the features of Lindsay Wagner, which right. is my, she's my all-time favorite uh, <laughs> TV idol or, or even celebrity right. idol, if okay. you will. And, and I, I, I've met her a few times. Nice. And um, I have to just have a doll of her because she, uh, it, it was from watching her show that I was inspired to really pursue my uh, my portrait drawing even further. Mm -hmm. I uh, back in back in the day, back in the seventies, after every episode, I would you know grab <laughs> my piece of paper and my pencil and I would I would draw draw the scenes from the particular episode that I just finished watching. Right. And I I did that constantly, <laughs> constantly throughout high school, and I was so obsessed. <laughs> Every magazine that I could find of her, I would buy with whatever allowance I had mm -hmm. saved up. Wow! So yeah, she she was uh, and, and yes, and uh, when I met her for the first time in 2006, mm -hmm. I was just it was just like an out of body experience. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I was literally literally floating in the air. I I didn't Aww, I, I, I didn't. I, I didn't even remember the, the first words I uttered or, oh. if, I, or <laughs> if I was even able to speak the first few <laughs> minutes of seeing her. You were starstruck, and, huh? <laughs> yes. And this particular doll, uh, she actually signed. I, she, she finally autographed one of the legs just because her character as the bionic woman, she had two uh, nu nuclear powered legs mm -hmm. and a nuclear powered arm. So, <laughs> so it was funny that she signed her her name on one of the uh, bionic legs. So this. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So uh, she's seen this doll, and she, you know, she was really amazed to see this, and that meant a lot to me mm, uh, for her to cool. see this doll. Okay, let's uh, set her aside for a minute. That's and of course, cool. one of one of my other favorites is uh, this doll. Oh yeah. Marilyn, she looks just like her. Oh the, the Marilyn Monroe doll. Mm -hmm. Thank you. This doll was, uh, the company that made this was uh, called Franklin Mint. Right. And she's uh, 15 inches tall, so she's taller than Barbie. But she has this very finely sculpted um, face that captures Marilyn Monroe's features very well. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is one of my favorite looks of her. From um, from the uh, event where she uh, sang "Happy Birthday" right. to mm -hmm. uh, President Kennedy, mm -hmm. so this this was her, the fashion, and I recreated her makeup and her hairstyle. Right, that's but so cool. To point out with 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 celebrity dolls, it's almost a given that you have to restyle the hair because the hairstyles are far from looking authentic mm, to the actual okay. real hairstyles. Okay. So, and not to uh, say anything bad about Mattel, but, you know, it, it's, uh, I'm sure it's a very challenging task to particularly replicate, and especially in, in exacting detail when you're, mm -hmm. when you're mass producing. Mass dolls. producing, right, exactly. Yes, mm -hmm. to, to actually capture, you know, every single strand of hair, every single detail. Mm -hmm. So I, I think, and ironically, I'm thankful for that because then <laughs> it, that's where I come in as, that's uh, right. as a customizer, <laughs> as a repainter to actually right. uh, do my job as a, as a repaint artist to, uh, to take that uh, doll further to the next level and make it more authentic or more, uh, uh, a closer to the actual likeness of the doll. That's pretty cool. All right, I was going to ask you that about you know when you were saying um, when you when you take the doll and you repaint that and put your spin on it. So I, I asked a, another guest of ours um, one time what made his dolls like his dolls. So I'm going to ask you that question. Like what makes a Noel Cruz repaint a Noel Cruz doll? 
Like what, like, what do you think that you bring to that? You know what I mean? To that doll to say that this is, this is who I am. And this is what I do when you look at that doll. Okay. I'm going to answer that with, with my, my doll customers, you know, my doll customers um, or, or even people that haven't bought my dolls, but just see my dolls mm -hmm. online or on social media. What they said was what makes my doll, my doll mm -hmm. was because I pay close attention to the likeness every single time. It's like you can tell exactly, and these are people mm -hmm. saying these things, okay? Mm -hmm. You can almost tell exactly who that doll is yes. just from looking at the photos without even reading the description, <laughs> okay? So whenever I, I show my dolls out there, every single time I would come across comments like that. I don't even have to read the description to know who that person is. Right, it's so who, true. <laughs> yes. And and so I would, and I am just humbled by it. Oh, yeah. I, you know, it gives me so much, it gives me indescribable satisfaction to know that my purpose in my artistic life has been achieved by <laughs> by the comments because the, my intention with every celebrity doll is to make it looking exactly like the celebrity that, that they were meant to portray. Right. Otherwise, what's the point in making the celebrity doll, right? Right. I mean, you could just call it any other doll, but if you have the, the audacity to say that this is a doll of this particular celebrity, that you you know you have to be ready to actually validate that mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. to say here it is here's right. my, my here's my doll, and that's and, what you do so well though you validate that right that's exactly what you. you do you really do it's it's so funny that you said that that, that what that's what people say I wanted to know what you said about it but I but it's true what people say is exactly what you do um and it was so funny because I think yesterday it must have been yesterday um my brother-in-law you know he knows I do the show and he texted me and he and he, he texted me a picture of a uh, of your doll he texted me an image with a doll and then a, re a repaint of the doll but he didn't tell he didn't say the name he was just like hey I saw this artist you know and I think you would be interested and literally as soon as I saw the picture I already knew who we were talking about. wow like, I knew <laughs> I said to myself this must be Noel's work right and I hit the oh, image wow. and sure enough it showed up and that's when I was able to text him and I said you know, thank you so much for sharing this. You know, I said, but I'm excited because, you know, I'm going to interview him, you know, tomorrow. But oh, I just wow. automatically knew as soon as I, I like saw him the already. image. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as I saw the image, I just saw the image of what the doll looked like and what it, you know, what it looked like now. And I knew it was you without a doubt. Without a doubt, thank I knew it was you. And so you're, you. you're right. Exactly. I got that. And it's a doll. And it does mean a lot to me. It, it means a lot to me because I chose this uh, particular line of work and, I, and, and, and most specifically uh, uh, working on celebrity dolls. And, and so for me to be able to actually back that up with, with the quality of, of my work, mm -hmm. whatever I put out there, it really means a lot for me and for people to actually, you know, give me that validation. Really just, I don't know, it just gives me that warm feeling every time and it, it never gets old. Mm -hmm. I, it, it just, it just makes me smile and just feel warm. Well, we don't want it to get old. We don't want it. We don't want it to get old for you. We don't want you to stop producing the amazing dolls that you produce. So, um, no, you know, in 21 years, I, in fact, in fact, uh, you know, with such a long, for such a long time doing it, I feel like I'm, I'm just, I'm, I haven't even, you know, created, enough for me to uh, say that I'm ready to or I'm nearing the end of my retirement I don't even in fact think of retiring right well, it's good. like for no. me it's, it's like well what am I retiring from I'm retiring right. from life because like this is my life right this is my life so right. to say that I'll be retiring it means I'm retiring from life I mean I don't it's not even work when you're when you're when you're enjoying what you're doing yes that's so when true when you're passionate about something but I do, and, and I, I thank the people who support me, and I thank my family because my wife, she's um, been in full support of me from the get-go, and, and my son, too, and, and the people around me. And just to be able to have that support system mm -hmm. and people that encourage you and people who 
who cheer you on and and, yes. and encourage you every time. It's yes. like, how can I even think about retiring? I mean, as long as my hands and my eyes are still working, <laughs> I shudder to think. But what else is there? What else you would do? Else? <laughs> if I don't create art anymore, it's like there's nothing you can, left you for can, me to You do. can come and help me edit. That's what you can do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Now, at least that would still be art, you know, yes, in my mind. <laughs> That's true. That's true. I, yes. I don't know how artful my editing is, but, you know, it still helps me out. <laughs> But I, I want I want to get back to that to that the, the, the part you were talking about of, of doing this and being passionate about this and you couldn't see yourself doing anything else, right? I mean, it, it's 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 just part of who you are. But I also I also what I want to ask is that, you know, even though that is part of who you are and it is what you do, is that something that can sustain your life? You know, is it financially? Because a lot of times people think being an artist, and we talked about that earlier today when you were saying you were a starving artist, right? When people think about being uh, creative or getting into that space, they don't want to uh, fully commit because they're afraid that they're not going to be able to, you know, sustain themselves financially. So in the kind of work that you do, have you, uh, uh, have you at this point now uh, created something that can sustain you financially, be, you know, because okay. of the work that you do? Yeah, absolutely. That's such a valid point, especially uh, when it's so true that so many artists are not able to really sustain that level of consistency where they can say that, mm -hmm. oh, I'm making enough money with this mm -hmm. and, I, and I can support myself. But, uh, you know, let me, you know, uh, tell you one thing. When I, when I first started doing this, I was very skeptical back in 2001, okay? But then um, I never really even, uh, it never really occurred in my mind that I, I worried so much about that aspect. I only worried about making this a passion because in my mind, mm. I thought if I was passionate about this enough, and and with the the, the climate, with the the interest in dolls going on right now, I I, I knew I could make a living out of this. Mm -hmm. and, and here's the thing: since 2001, when I first started this, I never stopped. <laughs> I never had any other job. Wow. This has this has been my full time job since 2001. Okay. And yes, my wife has her own job, mm -hmm. but there's no way that you know we we could raise our child just from mm -hmm. one person working, right? And, and and so just the just the blessing of being able to work full time doing this from the get go from its inception 21 years ago up to now, it's a full time thing. This is what I do, and this is. I, and I'm thankful that it hasn't always been that I'm able to ask the price that I've been asking now. Right. It, yes. it, it didn't start out that way. Mm -hmm. But back in the day, I was just taking commissions left and right just to, so I was <laughs> basically making it up in numbers. Right. What, I, what, you know, what I couldn't do in price wise, the right. amount that I was mm -hmm. asking for. But uh, now, uh, and thankfully, thankfully, I, I have come to a level in which I can, you know, ask for this mm -hmm. amount of money. Right, right. And it's gradual. Could, it's gradual. I could still, yeah. I could still, you know, offer my work on eBay. People would still pay, you know, a much higher amount of average than mm -hmm. when I first was starting out. So in other words, if I started out with 162 and, and then I went from 162 to $300 and then I mm -hmm. went up to $500 and, and with that consistency, I was able to just charge a commission amount, which I, I was regularly receiving mm -hmm. commissions. Right. In other right. words, asking, ask, asking that price, I was able to still, people were still interesting mm -hmm. it wasn't right. about really the price it was just the quality of work and, right. and, and i've gotten this uh, comment from from a lot of my customers that i i could have gone for for a much cheaper uh pr person probably to do this but I, I i wanted your work i wanted it to be you mm -hmm. and 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 i would you know i'm willing to pay this much amount of money to have your work 
And so I have that kind of person and you multiply it by so many people right. having that same sentiment, mm -hmm. having that same conviction about you. Nice. And so I, I, I was blessed in that way. And this mm -hmm. has been going on for, for so many years now. And with the funny thing was whenever COVID happened, that really got me worried. Like I thought with people losing jobs left and right, I'm, my business might, you know, just suffer you know, miserably because of this. Right. And 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 I was honestly thinking about <laughs> a day <laughs> job, finding some other kind of gig because you know this is a or these are different times we're living in. Right. This right. Uh, this is not these are not normal times anymore. Right. What if this right. happens? But I was just shocked. Not not only did I you know I keep this. The, my my customers, but in fact, my work is my workload even got bigger. <laughs> I had even more people uh, commissioning me for work. And uh, well, you know, doll collectors, man, I don't they know won't, if it they was won't stop collecting. <laughs> that doll collectors are not yeah, going to stop I, collecting. Maybe they just have a, a lot of savings stashed somewhere, mm -hmm. or just some have some hidden wealth. <laughs> uh, that I don't know about, <laughs> but I'm getting a lot of commissions mm -hmm. so that um, I sort of have to, you know, turn down some uh, commission offers because mm -hmm. uh, I feel I'd rather do this commission here right. rather than this one. Okay. I, I mean, if I had a, a if I had uh, a clone of 12 <laughs> other Noel cruises, I'd probably, <laughs> I'd probably accept them all, <laughs> but I don't. <laughs> But it's that's it's so funny. I, I actually have more work now than than I ever did, and and I, I'm just so grateful. So wow. So with uh, being 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 a retainer, or being in my my in my situation, mm -hmm. in, in in the question of sustainability, right? Uh, I'm not as worried anymore. Right. Okay. That's yeah. good. That's yes. good. So that's beautiful. <laughs> and, that's beautiful. And, uh, I, Yes, and of course I'm speaking just for myself. I right, know, of course, right. Just to add one more thing, it, I know I'm not. It's not going to make me rich by any stretch of the imagination. <laughs> I am not going to live in in, in a mansion or or <laughs> luxury place anytime soon. But the important thing is, I really. It, it sound. It may sound like a cliche, but I really. Mm -hmm. I really love what I do. And, and I think what you were saying before is, uh, is, uh, is really important. Yes, it may not make you, you know, like you said, put you in a mansion, but it makes you rich in the, in the opportunity to do what it is that you do and love to do. And, and the other thing, too, is that people, you know, people see that you're doing that and you are making a living. Um, it inspires them to want to, to know that somebody is doing that and they're making a living because a lot of the times, a lot of creatives, they just want to be able to do what they do and make money from it. You know, they're not thinking, oh, I'm going to go, like you said, and, you know, have my own jet plane or anything like that. They just want to continue to do what they do and, you know, buy groceries and make money, you know what I mean? And take a vacation and do things like that, but still be passionate and create the things that they create. And so when they see that that's what you're doing, I don't think it's a matter of, well, you know, he's, he's not doing it on this level. The fact is that you are doing it and it inspires other people that it can be done. You know, and so that's what. And I'm, that's and I'm so that. glad that you mentioned that, Georgia. I, you know, I, I'm so glad you brought that up because I, th that's actually one of the things that gives me so much joy, and I, I think it's you know a, a gift that keeps on giving is whenever you get compliment for your work, whenever you hear from people, especially with social media now. Mm -hmm. and, and, and here's the thing, here's the thing, I. I never in my wildest dreams even expected to have this kind of exposure and reach mm -hmm. with my work without without the internet, without social media, without the technology that we have right. now. I mean, back in the day, how could you yes. possibly reach a worldwide audience <laughs> or a worldwide market? So whenever, back in, I have to mention this, back in 2008, 
was when I first got written up in the media. And I think <laughs> that sort of helped um, put my work out there. This publication uh, saw my work. Mm -hmm. And then that article got picked up right. by other news agencies. And that's sort of how it all started to, you know, got me into having television interviews mm -hmm. and, 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 and articles online and on magazines and newspapers. And so th that sort of thing was, I wasn't expecting that one. I, that, that was nothing. I couldn't have never expected that or even conceived about that as being a thing that would be an offshoot of what I did as, mm -hmm. as an artist. Right. Just to be able to have that. And it, it's not so much as, the, as being uh, featured as much as it is to be able to reach a wider audience yes. and for for people to really take notice of my work. I, I, for me, that's really what mattered to me uh, uh, most primarily was mm -hmm. for, for me to be able to share my work. Right. It, it, it always mattered to me for people to, to see my work and to be to be recognized for what I do. Mm -hmm. And so and so be, being in um, being featured in all these publications allowed me that. Right. It allowed me to, to share my work and, and for people to see what I can do. And, and I think that's also part of the reason why, as far as financially, I'm, I'm able to sustain myself is because I had that privilege of, of being able to be recognized or be known by by as many collectors mm -hmm. and a wider audience that right. I... I I had a much larger potential for a customer. And if I, I hadn't done that, it would have probably, uh, probably been a much different story. But yes, yes. I, I, so I have that to be thankful for. And, uh, for, for, and also as an artist, just to be able to share and, and, and to getting artists who would ask what my tips are or what, what do I do for, what I, do I use for a painting and tips right. and tricks mm -hmm. like that. So. And just to be able to sort of, um, I don't know, I guess, quote unquote, to mentor them or to uh, just, just teach them in a way that I could never have done mm -hmm. to me is, is, is also a very important thing. Yeah. Just just to be in that position of, of not only being an artist, but to be able to share your gift. Because mm -hmm. to me, uh, I feel like I've been, like, if I've been giving something, then the least I could do is to at least be able to share that. Right, right, right. Be able to not not be selfish about it, but you know, <laughs> make use of it, not not squander it, not mm -hmm. not not waste it. And and this really was the opportunity for me to do that. Yeah, it's so I'm so glad you said that because I literally was going to ask you that question because when you earlier when we were talking, you said, oh, if I had like 15 more of me, I would accept more work. And, and, and so I thought my thinking was, well, OK, do you mentor, you know, other uh, other artists who want to, you know, who are up and coming? And you kind of answered that, you know, you do you do, uh, you know, have a great opportunity because you are seen and now you, you do have exposure, you know, through the media that people can reach out to you and, you know, ask for tips or help or things like that. And if you choose to mentor somebody, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a beautiful thing. I think mentoring is so important and, I, and I'm so glad that you, you know, that you, that you, that you do do that because um, it is a way of giving back, you know, it's, it's a way of sharing the talent that you have and, and, and giving another opportunity to other people. You know, so that, that's pretty cool. Thank you. I, if, if I had chosen a nine to five job, I probably would have had that, that uh, privilege <laughs> of uh, sharing my work. Right. I'd uh, probably be just stuck behind a desk. Uh, I, I don't think I'd have my work recognized. I don't think that I'd be ever written up as, as being the, the, you know, the employee of the month <laughs> or something. <laughs> So, uh, you know, it all worked out for me, I guess, uh, choosing this profession. Yeah, yeah, um, that's cool. Well, we're happy that it worked out for you because it works out for us, you know, all the people who, who absolutely love what you do uh, and, and recreating these dolls to make them, like you said, look like they should look. You know, and like you said, that's not taking away anything from the other people who have created those dolls. It's just that you just put a different spent on that you know and you bring right. something different out 
on that doll that that makes it just more realistic and and so we really appreciate all the amazing amazing repaints and, and oh, that you have you. done and that but, you shared with us so but i i just have to also uh, you know give credit to the the doll sculptors they yes. do a fantastic job yes it makes the job easier for yeah. me so uh so kudos to uh yes to we'll those uh, yes. the doll sculptors and, yes because you know, that's beautiful the, uh, the designers yeah. yes yes that's very cool well man no i am so i really I'm so thankful uh, that you said yes to be on In the Doll World. You know, um, oh, one of the, it's one my of the, honor, it's my pleasure. <laughs> one of the things, you know, when you were talking about being um, seen and you know, and 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 having the ability to uh, be seen nationally, you know, uh, nationally, internationally because of media and things like that. I think that's why for me it's so important that you know that this doll show exists because there's so many people. Who haven't heard about you you know that can that can see your work you know there's so many people who haven't heard about some of the smaller doll you know artists out there that are just up and coming that that this platform will allow them to to be seen internationally and and locally you know and give them a different a different uh, opportunity to be uh to be known in, in places that they probably never thought people would know who they are so um, that's why I love doing the show is just being able to share, you know, your journeys and the things that you go through and, and the things that you found, you know, and the things that make you who you are um, um, in this doll community. And so uh, I am, I'm just grateful that everybody says yes, you know, um, uh, because it's really just, it's a really about me sharing your work with everybody else. You know. Yes, and, and and thank you to you know thank you for for wonderful people like you who uh, provide this ample vehicle for artists like us to showcase what we do, and and and, and not just um, to showcase but actually to uh, be able to memorialize it and be able <laughs> to uh, show it to others and uh, you uh, ask the perfect questions. And, oh, uh, thank and, you. You you encourage you you encourage the, uh, the your guests to actually really share and 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 be inspired to tell their story and I thank you so much for that. Oh, you're so welcome. You're so welcome. You know, it's it's my pleasure. Totally my pleasure. Well, thank you again, Noel, for being on in the Dawn world with us and uh, uh, just share with everybody how they can find your your amazing work. Okay. Yes. Uh, for uh, everyone who's interested to check out my work, they can go on Facebook at Noel Cruz Dolls. And I'm also on Instagram uh, at Noel Cruz Dolls. Okay. So, or, or I'll, I also have a, um, a website. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, www.ncruz.com. Uh, it's my official website for all my work. Yes, and if you if you haven't seen his work, I, I I don't know where you've been, but if you haven't seen his work, you need to go and, <laughs> and, and check it out. He's he's just a brilliant at what he does. And uh, and again, I want to say thank you so much for being on in the doll world with us. And uh, we look forward to all the rest of your amazing uh, repaints. We, we, I'm excited just to see what, what you have coming down the line. So oh. I I'll definitely share uh, some more dolls uh, in the coming uh, weeks. So uh, make sure to uh, stay tuned and, and check them out. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you again so much. <laughs> Thank you, Georgette. You're so welcome. Well, okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.